Gloria's going to stay up here and hold my hand for me because I'm nervous. She knows I get nervous in front of public audiences. Welcome. Is this a great day or what? Welcome to Central City South in Phoenix. We are so excited about the uh, dedication of the Cofelt Lamoureux Homes. And um, I'm really glad to have by my side Gloria Munoz, the Executive Director of the Housing Authority of Maricopa County, who led the way throughout this whole process. Yeah. My name is Brian Swanton. I'm the President and CEO of Gorman and Company. we are just been blessed, truly blessed, uh, to be the lead developer and partner with the Housing Authority, uh, with the county, with the state, with the city, with the federal government, with everyone involved and uh, literally every layer of government uh, you can think of, as you can see with our financial partners here uh, in front of the stage. So thank you all for coming. Um, we ordered this weather specially for Gary from Wisconsin, and uh, I think there was 10 inches of snow on the ground in Madison when he flew out of town to come here to be with us today. So um, it's just a great day. I want to start, you know, Cofelt is really a story about uh, revitalization, renewal, uh, and a rebirth for this community. Um, but in saving Cofelt, which was originally not the plan, uh, the plan for Cofelt was originally to uh, demolish and dispose of this property. Um, but it was Mary Rose Wilcox who came to Gloria and said, no, if we close Cofelt, we're gonna have to close Hamilton School right next door. 75% of the student body at Hamilton School resides here at Cofelt. And uh, they said, we can't close Hamilton School. It's not just a school, it's a community center. It's a, an important part of our community. And uh, so all of a sudden, Cofelt went from the bottom of my priority list to the top. Thank you very much, Mary Rose. And she presented me with literally the biggest challenge of my career. And uh, sorry about the wind. But. So, uh, so this story is about saving Hamilton School as much as it is about saving Cofelt and really saving this community. And so we want to welcome up the, um, the council, the student council for Hamilton School, who's going to lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance. They're a little nervous, so let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Why don't you stand right here in front? Thank you so much, guys, and thank you for your involvement. The Hamilton, as you'll see throughout the uh, community, we have these uh, medallions throughout the 38-acre site here that were designed by the Hamilton School students. You're going to learn more about those throughout the program today. Um, you know, one of our main investors in this project is Berkshire Hathaway Affordable Housing Partners. I think Robert Johnston is somewhere back there. Um, and so it's important, I think, to start with a quote from Warren Buffett, right? Um, and Warren Buffett said, when looking for a partner, someone to partner with, you look for three things. You look for intelligence, you look for energy, and you look for integrity. And he said, if they don't have the last one, the other two will kill you. <laughs> and uh, Gloria Munoz is someone that has all three of those things, and a lot of all three of those things. She's incredibly smart, incredibly energetic, keeps me on my toes and uh, has been a passionate mom, has been dealing with a lot of family challenges and illnesses with her daughter uh, throughout this process. And she's really one of the strongest people I know and uh, has great, great integrity. So it's my pleasure and honor uh, to introduce you to Gloria Munoz. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here today. It means a lot because this took a whole village to make this project happen. It took countless meetings with the residents, the community stakeholders, and if you saw where we were when we started and where we are today, we're extremely, extremely proud 
of what we've been able to accomplish. As a lot of people know, it's, it's 301 units of housing that we've been able to preserve as affordable for a long, long, long time. And what's going on currently in the market, we're experiencing a, a crisis around affordability. We need to preserve what we have, and we need to expand and add more so that we can have a healthy, healthy community. So it took a lot of people, and we have a program of some of the people who've helped us do this. And I'd like to invite um, one of our partners, somebody who's been dedicated to making this project happen. She was here as a former Board of Supervisor when this project started. Um, Brian did mention her name earlier, and she was able to bring in a lot, a lot of partners to make this happen. And I'd like to give her some time to share a little bit of her story and some words with us, and then we'll move on to our next guest speaker, Mary Rose Wilcox. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you, Brian, for the shout out. Um, I'm really emotional today because this project took us almost 20 years. Uh, 20 years ago, we started talking about revising Cofelt. And there was always talk about we should just tear it down and start over, or tear it down and let people live in different areas. And I never gave up on Cofelt, and neither did the county, and neither did all of the partners you're seeing before you today. Because why in the world would you tear down housing that's affordable for people and can be renovated, repaired, and made livable again? Especially when people are used to the community they live in. You just can't tell people, I'm sorry, your neighborhood doesn't count. Because it does count. The neighbors in this area worked with Murphy School District. They built Hamilton School. They wanted something good for their children. They worked with the city. You see now the renovation going on, the corner is cleaned up. People have a wonderful area, and it's close to jobs. It's close to downtown, it's close to jobs that can be gotten by people that can go on the transit system, <coughs> and they can become a part of our vibrant community. So I am just elated today, and very glad to be a part of this. Uh, without people pushing, and there are a lot of people. David Smith, I don't know if he's here today. I know he took a tour, um, our county manager. Uh, when I went to him, I said, David, we cannot tear it down. He said, well, let's start working on it. Gloria was an advisor to the county, and then we brought her in as the head of our housing department. And her creativeness, uh, Gorham's willingness, and uh, everybody who helped. But most of all, these two people, uh, Brian and Gloria, got together. And they knew that in today's world, you cannot have it alone. County could not do it by themselves. Private could not do it by themselves. And the public-private partnerships that was created to put Cofelt on the map have been tremendous. So each and every one of you, from the developer, to the housing department, to the IDAs, and to the residents, hats off to all of you. And we can be so proud that a 20-year idea finally is culminating today and we have affordable housing that not only the city of Phoenix and the residents, but the whole state of Arizona can be proud of. Thank you. And it did take a lot of people to make this project happen. And our current Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, Steve Gallardo, has been an avid supporter of my work, this project, and he understands why we need it and what the needs are for continuing to preserve this kind of housing and expand this type of housing with programming. So with that, let's welcome Supervisor Steve Barriardo. Thank you. Good work. Good morning. This is definitely, as uh, Supervisor Wilcox indicated, it's definitely a celebration. Um, you think uh, where, uh, this all started to where we're at now. I got elected to the board in 2014, right in the middle of a lot of the, the actual discussion. Um, and you look around us, and this is just a reminder that when we have neighborhoods that uh, are a little run down and, and sometimes uh, 
uh, uh, forgotten. Uh, this is a reminder that we don't write those neighborhoods off. We go right back in those neighborhoods. We find a solution to, to bring uh, a new life, for the most part, right here in Cofell. You We now have 301 units for families to be able to call a home. One of the biggest issues facing uh, Phoenix right now is affordable housing. I talk to families every day. Many of our families face tremendous struggles financially and socially. They work very hard, sometimes two jobs, just to put a roof over their heads for them and their kids. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. We need more projects similar to this throughout the valley that is going to provide affordable housing to families uh, throughout Maricopa County. This is just a perfect example of what a, a, a public-private partnership comes together. All the partners that are involved, Gorman and all the other uh, partners that are listed, thank you so much. And thank you, Gloria and her team, uh, her dedication to make sure that this was a reality. I've not had, I was here for the groundbreaking, I was here for the tours prior to the to the uh, renovation starting. I haven't had an opportunity to take the tour yet of the new facilities and the new homes, but it's exciting. You have energy efficient homes. You have folks that are able to uh, call a very safe community home, and that's the important thing. Just think, you know, in 2012, the thought of just uh, uh, leveling this, this, this particular housing development and, and creating something else here. Uh, if it wasn't for the partners and the and Gloria and her team and the innovation of so many folks, uh, this may not have been possible. So thank you, Gloria. Thank you to all the partners. And congratulations to all the families that are going to be able to call this place home. Thank you. I want to give a quick shout out to some of our design team members. Some of the early concept plans were developed here through Athena Studio, uh, one of our great local architectural firms here in Phoenix. Um, design element, landscape architecture, Mark and Jeff are here. Uh, they do our landscape architecture uh, in these developments. And treehouse interior design. If you haven't been in the community building and saw some of the historic artifacts on the wall, uh, Mary Alexandra is here from Treehouse. Uh, interior design as well. So just a great shout out to that team and to the Gorman and Company uh, architectural team as well who you'll meet a little later. Uh, I want to thank Councilman uh, Michael Nowakowski from District 7 who could not make it here today but he has been a very active engaged partner from the very beginning meeting with the residents and attending a lot of our meetings here. Uh, so I want to thank him as well. Um, one of the council people um, from uh, City of Phoenix, Kate Gallego, uh, was someone who currently still chairs the, the housing, it has a long name, but it's Housing Sustainability Efficiency Subcommittee, uh, but there's housing and neighborhoods is the important part there. Uh, but Kate uh, took an early look at our health impact assessment that was put together by LISC and several other partners. Um, and she and I have a common bond. We both grew up with asthma. <laughs> and the asthma rates in this part of Phoenix are just off the charts, and that was concerning to her. And so she really challenged us to uh, engage in a healthy communities uh, partnership in our design in this project. And in fact, she wouldn't have supported us unless we engaged a healthy communities component from the very beginning, and that's exactly what we did. So we worked closely with LISC and the Healthy Communities Partnership and the Arizona Housing Alliance and others to make sure this is the healthiest community we could possibly make it. Um, and so I want to welcome up uh, our next mayor of the city of Phoenix, maybe, uh, Kate Gallego. Congratulations to everyone here. This is the most complicated housing project in the state of Arizona, and you did it. There really is so much to celebrate today. We took a project built by a, one of our most famous architects in this area and preserved the, the historic buildings, which is much more complicated than building a new. It's a, a complicated site. People stayed living here. Uh, the community and the, and the school stayed strong throughout this project. 
I think that uh, Gloria and Brian are going to get a world record for the number of different funding sources that they leverage. It's so fun to see all of the nonprofits and government entities that are here. It really is, I think, every branch of government I can think of got involved with this project. And that's a testament to the vision of people who said, this is going to be complicated, but we want to get it done, and we want to get it done in the right way with the residents in our hearts and minds as, as we move forward. So thank you to all the many partners who have made this project a real model for all of the housing that we're doing right now throughout the state of Arizona. Uh, so for, I think for several people, this may be the, the pinnacle project of their careers. They took life lessons of an entire career and, and put it into this project. So thank you to those who really did a lot of innovative things. We used financing tools that had never been used in Arizona before to get this done, and certainly uh, a number of tools that had never been put all together to make it happen. Uh, the City of Phoenix is proud to be a partner and support the great work that Maricopa County is doing, and we, we really are looking forward to the roles we'll play going forward. We have um, some folks from our Parks Department who are here and are looking forward to continuing a decade-long relationship that invests in our young people. I want to sign up for the summer program that uh, the Coleman Rec Center in, in City of Phoenix Parks are going to be doing. They're exposing our young people to very cool things. They're going to go into the, the MIM, uh, lots of swimming, the Arizona Science Center, and really saying summer is time on and you're, we're going to make sure that you get to spend your time wisely and doing very, very fun things. Uh, City of Phoenix uh, Neighborhood Services and, and our department director is here, was a, a financial partner on this, as well as our housing department. So thank you to the folks in Streets Housing and Neighborhood Services who made investments as well to make it so that our streets, our parks, and uh, our, this community has, has top-notch services. As uh, Mary Rose Wilcox and, and, and our current supervisor said, we got to keep investing. This neighborhood has gotten a lot, a lot of love, and, and now it's time to invest and um, continue to say this is where our future comes from. It is a neighborhood that is absolutely close to so many of our greatest assets and has so many wonderful people here. And it, it took a lot of vision to say, we want to invest and, and do this right. Um, as, as Brian said in introducing me, in looking at some of the health statistics for this area, I really wanted to make sure if we were going to be putting a lot of money in that we were saying, our young people need to have the same chances here that they would elsewhere. Every once in a while, a study comes out that says how much your zip code in Maricopa County determines your outcome in life. And this project is a strong stand saying that your zip code should not determine your life expectancy, that you deserve to be healthy regardless of where you live. And our partners have come up with some innovations that will help us in every project going forward to create a more fair and just uh, housing situation in Maricopa County. So thank you for the, the innovations in that area. Uh, Brian also mentioned that our housing committee at the City of Phoenix is also our sustainability subcommittee. And I have an environmental undergrad degree. First day is upon us, so I, I do want to congratulate um, the project team for really investing in top-notch energy efficiency and other environmental investments. Uh, it, is, it is nice to see the swamp coolers going away as well. Uh, the first thing you notice when you drive through here is that the profile on the roof has changed and <laughs> it's a lot smoother. Uh, I think the residents as we go into the summer are very excited to turn on those air conditioners and, and have a really comfortable, safe environment. Although maybe we'll keep inviting Gary from Wisconsin back and he'll just bring this weather uh, all summer long so we won't even need that. But just in case we have uh, the, the air conditioners and just a lot of investments that will make life a lot better for our residents, great opportunities to do your own laundry and your unit and things that many people may take for granted but will allow people to spend more time with their families and really have a better quality of life. So there's so many successes to celebrate here and I just want to join everyone else in congratulating the project team on a lot of vision and great execution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you heard about the financing staff. It takes a lot, a lot of money to transform a community this large and this big. And one of our partners, happens to be here today and will share some words with us. Uh, she is the director of the Arizona Department of Housing, a significant partner in all of the projects that preserve housing and create and expand housing. I'd like to introduce Carol Dittmore.
Good morning, everybody. And uh, on behalf of Governor Ducey and the state of Arizona and the Department of Housing, we're so pleased to be a part of this project. Um, I also want to just uh, make a shout out to Director uh, Michael Trailer, who is here. Um, he's now with the Department of Economic Security, but he was the director of the Department of Housing when this project started and was on the drawing board. So thank you for being here, Director Trailer. Um, Department of Housing and the state of Arizona is so thrilled whenever we can be a part of revitalizing our public housing in the state. A lot of it is aging and um, a lot of it is large and so we need to preserve that housing. Um, the state provided over 16 million in tax credit equity and over a million dollars in the state housing trust fund funding for this project and uh, it was the first uh, RAD project, which is another, a new funding source uh, from the Department of HUD, the federal level. Um, this is the first project, and we hope to do a lot more around the state. We appreciate all the partners. I understand there's over 60, um, and they're not all speaking today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Gloria, for, for letting us at the state say a few, a few words. And I also want to thank Gloria and the Housing Authority of Maricopa County. Um, a little known fact is that they provided leverage for another grant um, that the Department of Housing applied to the federal government for, where we received uh, 62 units of, of rental assistance for the developmentally disabled, and that's in partnership with the uh, Department of Economic Security. And they did that by setting aside 27 units here, and I understand that 21 of those units are already occupied and that the residents in those units um, have already um, become part of this community and been very active. And so that, that is a, a thrilling thing. I look forward to meeting all of them and uh, just want to thank you again for letting the state be a part of this project. Thank you. Okay, I also want to thank Dunlap and McGee Property Management Services, who has helped us from the very beginning transform this property and get all 300 units leased up in a timely manner, and they're still working through that, but we're getting very close to being 100% occupied with a long waiting list for years to come. Uh, one of the uh, exciting parts about this project is the preservation component. Um, it, this property was not originally on the National Register of Historic Places when we started and we were looking around for additional capital sources uh, because what we wanted to do is make these units feel like uh, new construction from the 1950s and uh, in order to do that we were kind of short about twenty twenty five thousand dollars a unit to really make it feel like new construction and um, our chief operating officer is not here with us today Tom Cap said you know we ought to put these buildings on the National Register of Historic Places and try and sell historic tax credits in the process, and I thought he was crazy. I looked around at these buildings and I thought, Tom, <laughs> this, these buildings were slated for demolition for a reason, you know. And uh, I said, okay, well, we'll give it a try. So the first uh, people we called uh, was the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, SHPO. And if you don't get SHPO on board, you can't really make it happen. So uh, we called SHPO, they came out, and they just fell in love. And they saw a lot of these post-World War II public housing developments uh, going by the wayside through demolition. I think I've demolished a few myself, so I felt badly about that. But, um, and they encourage us strongly because of the unique open space pattern of, that these buildings create. You don't build housing like this in today's uh, marketplace. And they saw it as a uniquely post-World War II building pattern that they really wanted to preserve elements of. And so they worked closely with us to get this property nominated. Um, and successfully so, and now we're listed on the National Register of Historic Places here. Uh, but more importantly, I think, uh, we raised almost six million dollars in additional private equity capital uh, by selling those historic tax credits to Stearns Bank. And that really allowed us to do the transformation the way we wanted to do it. So uh, I would like to now welcome to the stage Catherine Leonard, the director of our State Historic Preservation Office. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello. What a great day. I'll take it. Um, 
On behalf of Governor Ducey, the state of Arizona, and Arizona State Parks and Trails, of which is my, the parent agency for the State Historic Preservation Office, it's my sincere pleasure to share this time with you this morning. I want to give you a little bit of, um, since, since I'm the historian here, I'm going to give you a little bit of history of the site. Um, at the time of its construction in 1954, Cofeld Lamoureux Homes represented the first and the largest of the county's investment in affordable housing at the time. This is a significant space. It was listed in the National Register in 2014 for the story it tells about public housing in the county and uh, public housing and the role it played in the growing metropolis of Phoenix, Arizona. However, the property significance, which is also detailed in the nomination, emphasizes the various features of this place um, that were crafted by the noted architects Lesher and Mahoney to design uh, a place that would transform housing into a concept of home. And the features that are, are discussed in the nomination include prominent central and living dining areas, which at the time was sort of a, a novel uh, approach where you would create these open spaces for families to share. Um, the bungalow-like bungalow units to create a sense of hominess, um, and the creation of shaded outdoor spaces and courtyards. So again, as uh, Brian mentioned, this, this nice rhythm that you have of the courtyards in between houses where families could come out and share space, uh, a community room where families could come together for potlucks and playgrounds for children. Um, these were all places that transformed housing into homes. They were intentionally designed, but they did not remain static. As we all know, places change. And over time, Cofeld Lamoureux evolved to incorporate the adjacent Hamilton School, which is just as part, much a part of this community as, as the community was when it was formed in, in the 1940s, or excuse me, 1950s. Um, the school, the Hamilton School, and the residents here at Cobalt Lamoureux have created an incredible sense of place that's indeed worthy of preservation. And that's why we're all here today, to celebrate this sense of place and this significant historic landmark. I want to personally thank the residents of Cofelt here, who through the community health assessment process unequivocally stood up and stated that old does not equal substandard that the most sustainable solutions to providing high quality housing to families is not found in adding more demolished materials to a landfill, but in rehabilitating, rehabilitating and restoring what exists right here, right now. I want to thank the community for, for standing up and saying that the needs of their community could not be addressed through the creation, the simple creation of 300 additional housing units scattered throughout the valley. But the fact that this place here, this place matters. All of us at the State Historic Preservation Office could not be prouder of the efforts of the Cofell community to preserve these memories. And as you take a tour of the site, you'll see little memories preserved in the sidewalks, in the statuary where you have the, um, the, the steel piping forming the basis of your, of your statue, and those were the, um, the rungs that were um, placed in the backyards for uh, drying clothes. Our office is also particularly proud of the work that Gorman and Company has accomplished to pioneer a viable model of a public-private partnership in affordable housing that's predicated on the preservation of history rather than a scrape and redevelopment model. So many of you that are here today know that Gorman and Company are well known nationally for being leaders in affordable housing. But what you may not know is that they've also raised the bar here in Arizona for creative use of the federal tax credits, which is what Brian had just talked about. So let me get some numbers here. At $49, of reinvest or $49 million of reinvestment in this property, that leverage is almost $6 million of federal historic tax credits here at Cofield Lamoureux. And that makes this one of the largest tax credit projects our office has had the pleasure to work on. Uh, these projects typically convert vacant or under-resourced buildings into income-producing properties uh, that create jobs uh, and leverage an increased tax base for communities. Um, but here, with affordable housing, the use of the historic tax credits provides that critical source of equity, as Brian mentioned, to make the project happen. And the net effect, what we see here today, 
is that we have a project that has restored an economic life to this, to this community that can extend far into the future. And we also have a project that contributes to community character, vibrancy, and the well-being of this community for years to come. So I congratulate all the partners and all the residents for making us happen and doing the state of Arizona extremely proud. Thank you. And thank you for sharing a lot of that history. That's fabulous. Um, I'd also like to introduce someone who lives here at Cofell. I'm going to have Rita come up and share a little bit of their story. My name is Rita, and my dad and I, uh, many people know him as Chief. He's been living in the apartments here, in the Copeland Apartments, for about 48 years. My, my uncle, his brother, my Uncle Manuel, and my, my Aunt Liz, and my grandma, they've been living here also almost the same time. They passed away, you know, uh, but uh, my dad had um, lived here for a while. So when I was little, when I was little growing up, my, my sister and I, my dad would, um, my mom would send us here in, um, for vacations, you know, to come and stay with my dad and my grandma and my uncle. And my uncle Manuel used to always flood the yards. Not that you youngsters should get these ideals, you know, but, and he used to always soak the lawns and and we would just swim and like slip and slide and we didn't even care if there was bugs. Now I see the kids playing in the water and I'm like, oh Lord, look at those bugs, you know. <laughs> but um, I'm just really grateful here, you know, that um, when my, ch my children were growing up also, I brought them here to visit their grandma and their grandpa also. And uh, now my daughter, Yvette's 40 years old and my son's 37 years old, but they used to love to come every summer and uh, visit my dad. And we used to play at the park here with the bars. I had brought some pictures, and they were really, really small. But in the um, spring riders, they would just go back and forth, and I would just sit on the bars looking at them like, are you done yet? It's like freaking hot here, you know? <laughs> but uh, excuse me, excuse my language. <laughs> but a um, but, um, uh, year and a half, I've been here with my dad, Chief, and my mom's the one who sent me she felt in her stomach gut that my dad really needed my help and i'm like mom i just spoke to your dad two days ago and he said he's fine you know my dad my dad is 90 years old now and um she goes no mija you got to go check on your your dad you know something's really wrong with him so what i did on my vacation at my job i came to check on my dad and sure enough my mom was absolutely right my dad really needed my help you know and um, so I've been with my dad for a year and a half now, and um, him and I, he still likes to boss me around. I'm, I'm almost, you know, I won't say my age, but you know, he's still like, get over here now, I want something to eat, and I'm like, <laughs> but um, so I'm here taking care of my pop, and I know that here, living here now, I mean, when I was younger, the uh, complex did look like projects. I knew this section that we're in now, temporary, we used to call it the haunted section. You know, we just thought it was a ghost town. But now I'm living in one of the apartments and they're really, really amazing. They're beautiful and I really am grateful and thankful that the county has did this for all of us. You know, that we can, you know, the family's here. As long as my dad and I are here, we're gonna appreciate it. We're going to be grateful for every moment here, and um, you know I'm enjoying my dad, and I'm just thankful that I have an opportunity to speak. I'm not a speaker, but I just really appreciate everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. you did a fabulous job. Let's hear it for her father. So we've, we've talked about how many people it's taken to do this project. I need my glasses now because I do have a, a list of people that we would like to recognize. Um, Maricopa County was an integral partner in making this happen. Thank you, Steve, for all your support through this process. Thank you, Mary Rose, 
for helping lead that charge. It took a lot, a lot of support to make this happen. Uh, Shelby Sharbuck is here, and she is the CFO for the county, and also working with the Industrial Development Authority of Maricopa County, who issued $25 million of bonds to make this project possible. Uh, Bruce Liggett is here from Maricopa County Human Services. They will be providing services here um, on site to the residents. They have a rich menu of services that they will bring um, to the residents here at COFEL. And to the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners and to our board members who are here um, representing the Housing Authority, who provided the direction and the leadership uh, to allow me to do this work. To the team, the Housing Authority team, the people who are here, that I spin their heads with all these ideas and ways to keep adding housing, improve housing, improve lives, make people understand how important housing is to stabilizing your household and your family. Uh, to the mayor's office for getting on board right away through the encouragement of Mary Rose Wilcox. I remember that first meeting with Mayor Staten. <laughs> to Cindy Stotler from the Housing Department, thank you for supporting us. Chris Hallett from Neighborhood Housing Services, who's here financially supporting us, and we continue to ask you for more money. Um, Esther Avila, Kurt, and John Mason from the City uh, Phoenix Parks and Recs program, who's going to be doing a lot of the programming and youth um, services here on site. And they've been taking our youth off site as we've been through construction. So thank you for doing that. Councilman Novoskowski's office, who from the get go said, yes, let's save Cofell. Mike Trailer, you were the director when we started this journey. Thank you. We're still partners at DES with the people we're serving here. Kurt Shepard, who's here, he's also on my board and will be providing the um, health care services here on site through clinic. Rebecca Flanagan, who's been a uh, Flanagan consultant, um, consulting with the resident engagement piece on site and working very, very hard to her family and all her volunteers that she brings and all her connections. Um, Elisa Delavara from the Arizona Community Foundation, first money into the project. She said yes, right away. Free development funding to start the work to get crow fat where it is today. And to all of our creative artists, um, Mary Lynn, Lori, Adam, Martine, Jose, thank you for bringing your creative minds to create the art that we're gonna enjoy for so many years here at CoFilm. To Eric from Hamilton School, thank you for bringing your student council here to do the Pledge of Allegiance, and thank you for supporting us and the Murphy School District. And Jane Pearson and Liz and the funding that she brought to do the health impact assessment we're very grateful that was our roadmap to make this a great, healthy community. So a lot of people had a lot of things to do with this project, and a lot of you are here. I mentioned a few. The list went over 60-some people. I sat there every night putting another person on the list, putting another person. <laughs> so really, it took everyone that's here today, and I really appreciate your support for financing it, for coming to a meeting, for hearing about Cofell, hearing about Cofell, and hearing about Cofell. Because it took a lot, a lot of years to get here. We started in 2012, and so the stakeholders' meetings and the countless meetings with the residents will continue because it's such an important project to us. So I'd like to bring Brian up to talk a little bit about the financing partners and his boss, Terry. So we've mentioned a lot of the government partners and a lot of the private sector partners. I just wanted to really highlight the nonprofit community in Arizona and their willingness to put uh, their capital behind this project. Uh, one of the largest contributions was made by the Raza Development Fund, which is a national development, uh, pre-development source based right here in Phoenix, uh, serving largely Latino communities. And uh, they have been a huge partner from the very beginning. Uh, LIST, the Local Initiative Support Corporation, the Arizona Community Foundation, uh, and the Virginia Piper Charitable Trust. Um, thank you all so much from the nonprofit community uh, bringing your, your capital sources to this uh, project as well. Um, now I'd like to call up Gary Gorman, the founder of Gorman & Company and my newest subordinate. Uh, 
to uh, thank our staff. Thank you, boss. <laughs> so before I uh, embarrass and thank our team, I, I want to acknowledge my buddy Robert Johnson over there uh, with Berkshire Hathaway and, and their housing component, Affordable Housing Partners. You know, they're, they're a big company with a heart, so thank you, Robert. So my, my new boss told me I had to be brief, but I am going to embarrass and thank our team because it was a lot of work. So when I call your name, I want you to come up here in the sun so you can truly be embarrassed. Ben Schunk, our project manager. I saw Ben over there. Where are you hiding, Ben? Right there. Bill Cawthon, where's Bill? General Field Superintendent, there he is. Come on up. Larry Graham, I see Larry back there in the uh, orange shirt, our lead site superintendent. Dan Clark, our director of asset management, he's all dressed up today, there's Dan. Zach Johnson, the smartest guy in the room, there he is. Sally Schwinn, our new Arizona market president, there's Sally. Pete Meyer, who is our lead architect for this project, and that, that was a challenge, you did a great job, Pete. Emmeline Gabor, Emmeline just our staff architect and kept Pete in line. Megan Schutz is not here, she's back in the snow in Wisconsin, but she was our development coordinator. And Ryan, stand up. So, so when it came time, and when it came time to have a succession plan for our company, it was pretty clear who the new leader was going to be. And, and I think about those three characteristics that, Brian, you mentioned uh, that Warren Buffett talks about. Uh, intelligence, energy, and integrity. And Brian has all three of those uh, to a tremendous degree. And so there really wasn't any decision that I had to make. It was clearly Brian that was going to be the next leader. So thank you, Brian, and thank you all. Thank you. Okay, we're moving right along. Um, what I'd like to talk a little bit about, and we are going to have a ceremonial uh, piece that we're gonna do in front of the statue here, and we're hoping that you all join us there instead of a ribbon cutting. I'd like to invite the artists up to the podium to be recognized. We have Mary Lynn Kelly, Lori Echo, Jose Benavides, and Martin. Moreno, please come up. When I was looking at this project and thinking about how can we integrate art into this community, we went out to the community artists and we asked for proposals. And I said, give me your most creative thinking. Tell me how we can repurpose some of the product coming out of this project into beautiful art pieces. And these people did it. They did it. And you're going to see the art pieces throughout the statue. The spirit of renewal is a renewal of this community. The base is made with the clotheslines, the figure, and the butterflies are made with the screens. And that's the renewal of this community. So thank you for your creativeness and patience as this came along. And then throughout the property, we've used the clotheslines to create the medallions that you'll see. We have 54 of them. They, they serve as signage for our community. And those are made with the clotheslines. And Martine and Jose uh, worked with the kids at Hamilton, the kids from Cofell, to create the art that is the centerpiece of each of those medallions. The kids got a lot of, out of it. We repurposed product from this property. And we have beautiful pieces at one of the resident meetings as the art was being installed said thank you for turning this into an artist community we love it it makes us feel that we're welcome here and that it's a beautiful place to live so thank you very very much it's hard to surprise gloria and do anything special for her <laughs> so we didn't put it on the agenda so she's looking at me like the time um, the one thing that the artist came together, um, Jose, Martin, Lori, and Brian is here as well, and Adam, the teams that have been involved, an art project is very diverse. 
But Mary Rose Wilcox and Kay Gallego, you know, normally you guys are thought of as leaders and in, in, in your category. But in my mind, um, you showed extraordinary artistry. Um, it's not necessarily with music where you play notes, and it is not necessarily paint and color that you create with. Um, and in Restore Art's mission to return art to the community and the classroom, we recognize for the first time today um, a new award for the community. It's called Arturopreneur. In an artist, you usually bring together materials to create something of new beauty out of the resources that you were provided, either the colors or in this case, we have two extraordinary artists that we would like to recognize. And um, because the entrepreneur side of it means that you do things with the community. I want to read to you the, the basics of it. It just says it's a one line. It says demonstrating outstanding artistic skill, thought, thoughtful business practices, and creative collaborations resort, re, resulting in extraordinary benefit to the community. So today, for the first time, we would like to award two of these, one to Gloria Munoz and one to Brian Swan. Well, thank you. And this is a beautiful piece. Now, this is a beautiful piece. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you, Mary Lynn. And thank you all. Thank you. So I'm going to turn the program over to Rebecca Flanagan, and she is going to help us with the presentation of the renewal, the spirit of renewal. And this is Rebecca Flanagan. If we could join her around the statue. And for Kate, Mary Rose, Supervisor Gallardo, and Carol, and Catherine, would you stand closest to the statue? We have a presentation we'd like to do with you. And yes, I was planning and consulting and it has been a labor of love to work on this project with uh, Gorman and the Housing Authority. We're going to do something a little bit different, as Gloria said. Instead of a ribbon cutting, we're going to do a butterfly release. But we wanted to tell you a little bit about that before we got started. It really got started um, because my Someone who thought, you know what, we're going to be doing um, planting, we're going to have landscaping, so why don't we make this a butterfly, modern butterfly way station? And we have this beautiful sculpture, as you see, butterflies at her fingertips. What better than to have a butterfly garden and a butterfly way station? So um, we said, okay, let's talk to the team, and they were supportive, we were able to use some of the landscaping budget already are the kind that all these pollinators, these butterflies and hummingbirds will love forever. So we are very excited about that. Then Mary Lynn introduced us to Butterfly Wonderland, Scottsdale. I don't know if any of you have been there, but guess what? Adrian is the Director of Education and she is here today. And what she's done for us already is that she took 64, she sponsored 64 of the students from Hamilton who live in Kofeld over to the Butterfly Wonderland to see the life cycle of the butterfly, to learn more about that, and it was just a wonderful trip for them. And in addition, she's going to come back, so all of you adult residents that are here, she's going to provide a talk on the life cycle of the butterfly and how we can keep this uh, butterfly friendly environment. And uh, so we will have that as well. Um, let me just look at my notes for a second. Um, the important thing I wanted to tell you about how important the butterfly as a symbol. The symbol for us at Cofelt, you heard it over and over again, revitalization, spirit of renewal, transformation. And as butterflies go through a metamorphosis. I mean, they just go all out. They're from egg to <laughs> caterpillar to chrysalis to beautiful butterflies that 
so too did Kofeld, a little bit different, did a physical transformation. Each one of the units was, was revitalized. The community center, we can't even recognize it. Mary, I mean, can you recognize this, Mary Rose? It's unbelievable. And the park. The park is just transformed as well. But in addition, things that Gloria and Brian and others that have brought the services to the community center that our residents will be able to choose to transform their lives with those wonderful opportunities. So what we want to do is use that same symbol and you know get the butterflies. And so I'm going to ask Adrian to talk a little bit about butterflies, and then we're going to go ahead and give you boxes. And we're going to actually release butterflies today in dedication to this wonderful spot for the residents that live here as a reminder of transformation. Thank you. Today is accumulation of many dedicated hours and dedicated individuals. And so it's an honor to be here to dedicate this butterfly garden. Butterflies are pollinators, and it is such an important thing for this garden today. Uh, monarchs will be coming here in the fall. You'll have queen butterflies. You might have the whole life cycle. We have desert milkweed. That is the host plant for monarchs and queens. Uh, we have other host plants, so this is just a wonderful community garden, and it'll be wonderful to have the residents here be part of that. So thank you. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and get the boxes. As we pass out the boxes and let uh, begin the butterfly release, there is an additional... Um, oh, yes. Very important <laughs> surprise. We wanted to describe how the art has come to life. So um, Lori and Jose have uh, significant roles in giving you some imagery behind the project. So I wanted them to come up and Jose and Lori, Lori and discuss the imagery. Just real quickly, the spirit of renewal, we talked about the clothesline poles on the bottom. The long legs represent rising above life's challenges. The butterflies represent the transformation that has come here at Cofelt Lumero. And then the, you can see in some of the butterflies, some of those security screens actually are kinetic and will move a little bit with the wind. Say, you want to say a few words about your project? Yeah, the medallions that were uh, created by the Hamilton, uh, is the design by Hamilton School, but Dean and I uh, redesigned them, and there are 54 of them throughout the committee, and there's butterfly designs in some of them because that was one of the things that we asked the students to do. And uh, so that throughout the community, uh, and enjoy them. Thank you, Jose, very much. And yes, we're going to do tours a little later, and I'll tell you about that as well. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, and I'm going to point to the certificates. We're actually a certified uh, monarch butterfly way station, and we're also registered with the natural, National Wildlife Federation. So we're very excited, and the signs are here, and we have certificates for both Brian and, and Gloria. So now we're going to do a very special, and we tried to keep this secret. Oh my God, it was so hard. So, I think a couple of people alluded to the fact that although uh, Gloria is extraordinary on any given day, um, this particular project held some emotional um, events that <coughs> took her extraordinary work into the stratosphere. So, um, we wanted to take um, a moment to talk about the profound um, foundational loss she suffered during the project, and yet, um, and in addition to that, in the loss of her father, uh, who had been such an inspiration, and actually drove her to make sure that this project was um, brought back to life. Uh, it was an extraordinary story of his life, and it was we all go. <laughs> so the story of transformation and butterflies seems to have another depth. 
Um, one of the renewal pieces is, is that uh, in addition to that, um, you think about how your, your parents represent your past and your history, and your children represent your future. So as we were just helping her um, navigate the new normal without her father, her daughter survived a life-saving double lung transplant. <laughs> And in the midst of that, I don't know how many millions of dollars that she has taken care of for the state of Arizona and the community and transformed it as well. So for Gloria, uh, so many people wanted to be a part of that. It's an extraordinary depth of character and skill. And I know that you would say that you would not be able to do it without this team. And each of them knows Brian and the amazing people at Mormon, the artists know. And it would be beyond us to not make this the first significant um, commemorative garden um, on behalf of your father. And Jose, you want to come crafted? up? Yes. <laughs> Jose crafted the first ever <laughs> memorial butterfly. Yeah. You could do. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh. This butterfly, Gorman has offered to um, install and select a location that she feels is appropriate to be the first ever commemorative butterfly. And uh, people of note, we hope to recognize here and return each year to honor him. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure. On behalf of all of us, everybody wanted to do something for you, Gloria. Everybody, you're just so touched. Thank you. And amazing. Thank you, Brian. Um, Okay, and we were, um, what we were doing, and yes, Gloria, I, I couldn't do this for her, so I'm so glad Mary Lynn stepped up and said she would do it, because I'd be in tears as well. But um, as we are letting the butterflies kind of come to life, uh, <laughs> um, that's a really good story, too, that hopefully you'll hear from Adrian and Mary Lynn and others. But um, we want to go ahead, and if you want to surround the pedestal. A butterfly lights beside us like a sunbeam. And for a go ahead, so then they can release it as you breathe. And for a brief two, three, release. I'm holding, come on, come on. Um, <laughs> can't control everything. For a brief moment, glory and beauty belong to us in our world. But when it flies on again, and although we wish it could have stayed, we feel blessed to have seen it. all the butterflies yes. good 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 thank you so much I want to now uh, turn your attention um, our dignitaries can come they've done their job thank you very much and thank you so much for participating with us we are going to have ballet folklorico tradiciones a dance company will entertain you over in the amphitheater and they'll get started and then we will um, also have tours of three of the the, the, the units and they're designated by butter i mean by balloons not butterflies but balloons and um if i can have the, the uh, dunlap and mcgee people who are going to be our tour guides raise their hand they're in black and they're around and hopefully um you can grab one